How come the cutest scene with Dusty Bun and Susie Poo almost didn't happen at all? What hidden references are concealed in Susie's lines that could hint at the show's finale? And who from the Stranger Kids made their own offset version of the never-ending song? Hi, I'm Dylan. This is our weekly Stranger Things Decoded video, and today it's all about never -ending story. Ah. The Duffers wanted things a little different. While this scene made our hearts melt, originally the Duffers had a completely different plan for Susie and Dustin. Turns out Dustin was supposed to sing another song with his camp girlfriend, which is not a song really, but more of a poem. At one point, the show creators were sure that the Ent song from The Lord of the Rings would be a perfect match. If you think this was a bad idea, you'd be right. It was a complete disaster. Oh, ruin my I saw you shine on a summer's day. And two more minutes like that would make more than just the hobbits fall asleep. Of course, the Duffers would have made the song more dynamic and catchier for the Stranger Things scene, but I think we can all agree that it doesn't even begin to compare to the charming and sweet song from the never-ending story. But that wasn't what made the Duffers change their minds. They were more concerned with copyright rules. As pragmatic as it is, the Ent song from The Lord of the Rings didn't work out because of Amazon. The company is currently working on The Lord of the Rings prequel series, and using the Ent song would not go over well with Netflix. Realizing that, one of the Stranger Things writers came up with the idea to use the main theme song from the 80s hit fantasy movie, which in the end worked out for the best, though the scene wasn't the easiest to film. Secrets of Filming the Song Scene As Gaiden revealed to Hollywood Reporter, the singing sequence wasn't something really discussed in detail until much closer to production. That's because the Duffers weren't sure they would actually record the whole song. It was a very risky decision for the showrunners to put a two-minute song during the biggest climax of season three. When they did decide to do it, things started to go wrong. Although it definitely helped that Gaiden Matarazzo has experience on Broadway. True Stranger Things fan know that Gaiden played a role in the famous Les Miserables and many other musicals. But he wasn't the only one earning his musical skills on Broadway. In fact, that's where he met his Susie Poo for the first time. The actress Gabriella Pizzolo made her Broadway debut in the title role of Matilda the Musical. The two often hung out together back then, and that definitely helped during the filming of their scene, which was really challenging. First, Gaiden had no idea what the song was all about. He found out about the iconic 80s movie only after reading the script. Fortunately, Gabriella is a real fan of the never-ending story. She had watched the movies repeatedly when she was in the third grade, so she was able to help Matarazzo practice the harmonies. The second challenge was that Gaiden and Gabriella couldn't be in the same space to shoot their scenes, as the audio would bleed over each other. Nevertheless, each actor supported the other by singing along on a microphone in a nearby room. How could that possibly help? Well, the music and the other person singing were pumped into the actor's ears, so they could react to each other. Sweet for the kids, but a headache for the music editors. Another challenge was finding the right mood for the song. Even though the kids are both capable singers, it was hard to find the right tempo and set the needed arrangement. So the music editor David Klotz spent days figuring out the best option. It was tough. First, he sped it up so it sounded like a club track. Definitely not the right mood for the sweet scene. But in the end, he came up with the version we are all familiar with. Everyone on the set loved it! Well, at first, because after filming, it was stuck in everyone's head so much that some of the other cast members had no other option but to try to make their own versions of the song. The Never Ending Challenge Oh my god, The Never Ending Story is one of my favorite movies of all time, revealed Maya Hawk. And during filming, she was one of those who found herself going around the set singing the melody, because it was so catchy. The Stranger Things star Millie Bobby Brown also couldn't stop. She and the writing staff even issued a hashtag never-ending challenge. It involved a reenactment of the iconic song on Instagram and Twitter. Fans loved it. Even the original star of the never-ending story, the childlike empress Tammy Stronach, joined the fun along with her daughters. Yeah, that cute little princess you remember has two princesses of her own now. Hard to believe, right? Stephen Colbert and Jimmy Fallon also participated. And of course, Millie herself accepted that challenge. And it looks awesome!
And can you guess who the red-headed crazy drummer is playing this awesome cover? Is that, is that Sadie Sink? The title of this video actually hints that this could be our Mad Max, but they won't fool the Stranger Things fans. It is not Sadie. The drummer is from England, but she's pretty awesome as well. The only cover of this song that Sadie Sink did was on the set of Stranger Things, when Max and Lucas teased Dustin about his romantic relationship with Susie Poo. And speaking of, even though she is only in one scene, Susie gave such a memorable performance that it made fans ask a major question. Will we see Susie in season four? Nothing's official yet, but fans definitely want her romance with Dustin to be a never-ending relationship. But their relationship won't be simple. Let us remind you that Susie actually lives in Utah and she's from a Mormon family. As Dustin said, him not being Mormon meant that Susie's parents wouldn't approve of their relationship. But season four will be outside of Hawkins, so perhaps aside from Russia, we'll also get to visit Utah? Could Susie join the main group as another science and numbers expert? Who wouldn't want that? Well, maybe only those who keep saying that it's Susie's fault that Hopper met his tragic end in season three. And if not for her stubborn desire to sing the song, Hopper would be together with Elle. But now, as we all know, Hopper's alive, so there's no doubt the two will meet again. So please stop hating that little girl. To help you like her character more, we have one more secret about Susie. Secret references in Susie's lines. The girl said only a few words in the series, but those turned out to be fulfilled with some cool 80s references. Listen to this. Yes, yes, you're saving the world. I heard you the first time, but Ged is also saving Earthsea, and he's about to confront the shadows, so this is Susie signing off. Ged has to save Earthsea, and he's about to confront the shadow. What's that all about? Ged is a fictional character from Ursula K. Le Guin's Earthsea novels, and those novels have a lot in common with Stranger Things. One Reddit user had an interesting theory that the Duffer Brothers gave us a clue about the ultimate ending of the series with that single line of Susie's. The plot of the Earthsea book sounds very similar to the show, with the Shadow being a monster accidentally summoned by a young boy, Ged, with untamed magical powers. The Shadow is banished, but later returns and stalks Ged. Remind you of anything? Then, at the end of the novels, Ged ultimately vanquishes the Shadow by merging with it. Well, isn't that what happened to Elle at the end of Season 3, when the Mind Flayer tried to mind meld with her? So perhaps that piece of Mind Flayer that was stuck in Elle's leg is still there. And in Season 4, we'll see how Elle would have to kill the Mind Flayer by merging with it and taming it from the inside. Just like it happens in the Earthsea books? What do you think about this theory? Share with us in the comments, and as always, thanks for staying awesome! <laughs>